to the angel of the church in Pergamos write, These things saith he which hath the sharp sword with two edges. I know thy works and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is. And thou holdest fast my name, and hast not denied my faith, even in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was slain among you where Satan dwelleth. But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed unto idols, and to commit fornication. So hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. Repent, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. At the time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full, a king of fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up, and his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. And he shall destroy wonderfully, and shall prosper, and practice, and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. And through his policy also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand, and he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes but he shall be broken without hand. First of all, give an honor to God and our Lord and Savior, Barack Obama. Barack Obama! Who's the Savior? Black Jesus. Barack, o Barack Obama, thank you for doing everything and all the kind stuff. Thank you for all the stuff that you helped us with. Thank you for taking the courage and responsibility for everything you have done for us. And God has gave you a special power. And you, and you are going to handle it great, just fine. You are good, Barack Obama. You are great, and, and when you get older, you will be able to do great things. Love, Stephen. Barack Obama! Be still, and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations, be exalted in the earth. Contrary to the rumors that you've heard, I was not born in a manger. I was, I was actually born on Krypton and sent here by my father, Jor-El, to save the planet Earth. And the beast was taken, and 
with him the false prophet that brought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. and other countries weigh a possible military option against Syria, a senior Iranian lawmaker today warned that any military intervention inside Syria would result in a regional war that would not end favorably to the United States or to its allies across the region. Assad himself, hoping to take advantage of President Obama's hesitation, today told French daily Le Figaro that a U.S. airstrike could trigger a conflagration in the Middle East. No one knows what will happen, he said. Everyone will lose control of the situation once the powder keg explodes. Well, Vladimir Putin, in speaking with the Associated Press, strongly warned the West against unilateral action against Syria and also said that if the United States has proof that chemical weapons were used by the Bashar al-Assad regime, then it must be presented to the UN Security Council. First of all, I would address Obama not as my colleague, not as the US president, not as the head of state, but as a Nobel Peace Prize winner. We should recall what has been happening over the past decade. How many times did the US initiate military conflicts in various parts of the world? Has this ever helped to resolve even one problem? Orlando, Florida. Again, on our question of how, would your, how should you, or your member or senator vote, what would you say to your member? Uh, this is John on our independent line from Orlando. Yes, sir. I would I would tell my uh, representative that we have the people are divided in America. There's the informed and the uninformed. The informed pretty much uh, get their information from uh, alternative media, and the uninformed get their message from globalist media, which we see on TV, all the main channels on TV. If you listen to alternative media, you'll find the exact reason why we're going into Syria, and it's a very, very dark, bad thing. Uh, most of the uh, soldiers on those ships are the ones that will not follow illegal orders to confiscate guns in America. So they're going to be exterminated. They're out there to be exterminated. And what's going to happen after that is Russia and China are going to attack us. We're going to have martial law and they're going to do a gun grab. The New World Order is going to bring in a whole, and we're not going to have the Constitution anymore. This is it. This is the big one. I want to thank uh, the leaders of both parties for being here today uh, to discuss what is uh, a very serious issue facing the United States. Uh, and uh, the, the fact that uh, I've had a chance to speak to many of you uh, and uh, Congress as a whole is taking this issue with uh, the soberness and seriousness that it deserves is greatly appreciated. And I think vindicates uh, the decision for us to present uh, this issue to Congress. Uh, as I've said last week, as Secretary Kerry made uh, made clear in his presentation last week, uh, we have high confidence that Syria used uh, in an indiscriminate fashion chemical weapons uh, that killed thousands of people, uh, including over 400 children, uh, and in direct violation of the international norm uh, against using chemical weapons. Uh, that poses a serious national security threat to the United States and to the region. And as a consequence, Assad and Syria needs to be held accountable. Uh, I've made a decision that America should take action. Uh, but I also believe that we will be much more effective, uh, we will be stronger if we take action together as one nation. And so this gives us an opportunity not only to present the evidence uh, to all of the leading members of Congress and the various foreign pol policy committees, uh, as to why we have high confidence that chemical weapons were used and that Assad 
use them. Uh, but it also gives us an opportunity to discuss why it's so important that he be held uh, to account. Uh, this norm against using chemical weapons that 98% of the world agrees to uh, is there for a reason, because we recognize that there are certain weapons uh, that, when used, uh, can not only uh, end up uh, resulting in uh, grotesque deaths, uh, but also uh, can end up uh, being transmitted to non-state actors, uh, can pose a risk to allies and friends of ours like Israel, like Jordan, like Turkey, uh, and unless uh, we hold them into account, also sends a message that international norms around uh, issues like nuclear proliferation don't mean much. Uh, and so I'm going to be uh, working with Congress. Uh, we have sent up a draft authorization. We're going to be asking for hearings and a prompt vote. And I'm uh, very appreciative that everybody here uh, has already begun to schedule hearings uh, and uh, intends to take a vote uh, as soon as uh, all of Congress comes back uh, early next week. Uh, so uh, the key point that I want to emphasize to the American people, uh, the military plan that uh, has been developed by our Joint Chiefs and that uh, I believe is appropriate is proportional, it is limited, it does not involve boots on the ground. This is not Iraq and this is not Afghanistan. This is a limited, proportional step that will send a clear message not only to the Assad regime but also to uh, other countries that may be interested in testing some of these international norms uh, that there are consequences. It gives us the ability to degrade Assad's capabilities when it comes to chemical weapons. Uh, it also uh, fits into a broader strategy that we have. It also uh, fits into a broader strategy that we have uh, to make sure that uh, we can bring about over time uh, the kind of strengthening of the opposition and the diplomatic and uh, economic and political pressure required so that uh, ultimately we have a transition uh, that can bring peace and stability not only to Syria but to the region. Uh, that can bring peace and stability not only to Syria but to the region. Uh, but I want to emphasize once again, uh, what we are envisioning is something limited, it is something proportional, it will degrade Assad's capabilities. At the same time, we have a broader strategy that will allow us to upgrade the capabilities of the opposition, allow Syria uh, ultimately to uh, free itself from uh, the kinds of terrible uh, civil wars and death and activity that we've been seeing on the ground. So uh, I look forward to listening to the various concerns of the members who are here today. I am confident that those concerns can be addressed. Uh, I think it is appropriate that we act uh, deliberately, but I also think uh, everybody recognizes the urgency here and that we're going to have to move relatively quickly. So with that, uh, to all the, uh, of you here today, I look forward to an excellent discussion. Mr. President, are you prepared to rewrite the authorization and does that undercut any of your authorities? Yo, uh, I would not be going to Congress if I wasn't serious about consultations and believing that uh, by shaping the authorization uh, to, to make sure we accomplish the mission, uh, we will be more effective. Uh, and so long as we are accomplishing what needs to be accomplished, which is to send a clear message to Assad, degrading his capabilities to use chemical weapons, not just now, but also in the future, uh, as long as the authorization allows us to do that, uh, you know, I'm confident that we're going to be able to come up with something that, uh, that hits that mark. Are All right? Okay. Thank you, everybody. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light, and the children of the day. We are not of the night, not of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken, are drunken in the night.